Hello and welcome to another video. This video will be just going off of the uh, calc two number one. This is area between curves, that video. And this is the area between curves examples. And let's begin. So for the first example, we have y squared is equal to 4x, x squared is equal to 4y, and we want to find the area between them. We want to find the area between them. Oh. Let's see if this will focus it. All right. First step to find the area between them, I always find it's very helpful to sketch out the graphs so you actually know what you're doing. Now, for y squared is equal to 4x, y squared equal to 4x, we can rewrite this as y is equal to square root of 4x plus or minus. Now it's plus or minus because you just took the square root here. And this is nothing but, well, we know what square root of x is. It just looks like that. So the square root of 4x is basically the same shape. But also we have to take into account the negative side. Now for this guy right here, we have x squared is equal to 4y. We can take the 4 to the other side and get y is equal to a quarter of x squared, quarter times x squared. That's just a cool looking parabola. We already know how that looks. And if you can see, there is the area that we need to find. So the next step is to find the point of intersection because these two points of intersection define where the area is. And to do so, we can set these two functions equal to each other. So for instance, um, we can put this y in place of this other y, and find out where the common point is. But in order to do that first, we should deal with this plus or minus just to make our lives a little easier. If you notice on the graph, oh, I should write down, this is y is equal to plus minus. And this is y is equal. To. If we notice on this graph, if we notice on this graph, we only are talking about the positive side we don't need to worry about this negative side. So we can rewrite this as 4x. For we don't have to take into consideration this negative side. All right, so set them equal to each other. So this guy into this guy. I get a quarter x squared is equal to, remember we got rid of this minus, so it's just 4x. Square both sides, get x4 over 16 is equal to 4x. Cancel those x's. x3 over 16 is equal to 4. Multiply both sides by 16. You'll get 64. Cube root of 64 is, well, 4 times 4 is 16 times 4 again is 64. So 4, cube root of 64 is just 4. So we know that these intersect when x is 4. And if we actually haven't, if we didn't cancel these x's right here, we would have found that 0 is also a solution. So if you look over here, we get x4 over 16 is equal to 4 x 
go ahead and cancel these extras. You could see if you plugged in zero, both sides would equal zero. So zero equals zero. So you know zero is also a solution to that. All right. So we know that when x is four, it's a solution. And also when x is zero. And we could see visually. We already knew that x was zero was a thing. We didn't really know what this point was, but now we do because we found it. X is equal to four. All right. Now with the calculations. So there's the reason for this example is there's two ways of to, to do this integral. We can make vertical rectangles. Oh, that's not going to show up. I'm going to redraw this thick guy over here, this area. <laughs> this is just right here. So we can either create vertical rectangles everywhere in it, like my video, if you watch that. Or we can actually create horizontal rectangles, which I didn't show in that video. This is why it's good to do practice. There are different ways that you can do stuff. It's the same exact concept as my video, just rotated 90 degrees. So I'll show you both ways. So way one, number one, is we'll just do it the standard way. So a vertical rectangle. So we'll be making vertical rectangles. We'll make vertical rectangles everywhere. And we could sum them up using the integral sign. So we'll get integral of well, what's the size of this vertical rectangle at any given point. Well, if you think about it, so we have a vertical rectangle here, vertical rectangle there. This, this is this guy. The size of this is the top portion of the function minus the bottom portion of the function. And that's just, well, root 4x minus whatever this bottom was, a quarter of x squared. So that's the size of this. That's the overall size. And the width is just dx. Sorry if you couldn't see there. So now we know that the height of this rectangle is root 4x minus a quarter of x squared. So that's the height. And then the dx, which is the width. So the area, height times width of the rectangle. So that's right here. Height times width is the area. And we're setting up all the areas from, well, it goes from zero all the way to when x is equal to four. And we found right here. So zero to four. Now we got to solve this integral. Square root, by the way. Now all we got to do is solve this integral. So you want to take this two out, out front, or this four, square root it, I mean. So you get two times root x minus all dx. And then take the integral. So you get two times x, three over two. All divided by three over two. You get negative quarter x to the power of three all over three. Evaluated from zero to four. So this you do the three over two is actually two divided by three over two is actually two and multiplied by two over three. So you get four over three. All evaluate from zero to four. So plug four in there. 
plug four in here. And I put zero in to minus whatever zero is equal to, or whatever zero gets you. This is zero, zero, it's minus zero. Four, square root is two. Two cubed is two times two times two, so two times two is four, times two is eight. So this is times eight minus four over 12. Whoopsie, this is a cubed. Four cubed over 12. You can rewrite 12 as four times three. Four times eight is, so four times eight is eight plus eight plus eight plus eight. Eight plus eight is 16, plus 16 is 32 over three, minus these cancel. So we get 16 over three, and then you equal 16 over three, and that's the final answer. So the other way to do it is to do it the horizontal way. I guess I didn't have to draw this graph again, but I did. So I'm cool. No, I'm not. Oh, it's blurry. So this function right here, I'm just going to remove this. But we can look at this for reference. This top function right here was y is equal to 4x all rooted. And this function right here is y is equal to quarter times x squared. So we're doing it horizontally now. You've probably never seen this if you're watching this. So it's horizontal. It's the exact same thing as vertical, but we're just working in the other direction. Sorry about that, Mike. So the other way to do it is the horizontal way. I already said that. But this length, now we're working with length. We're still trying to find the area of the one rectangle, but now we're working in length. So the width of this guy is dy, if you notice. And the length of this guy inside the middle is this right side minus this left side. The right side minus this stupid camera. This right side minus this left side. What is this right side? Well, this function is y is equal to a quarter times x squared. But the only problem is that's what, that's what the y is. It's not what the x is. The x is actually, if you rearrange this, you can get the x to equal. We'll multiply both sides by 4 and take the square root of both sides. In doing so, you'll get x is equal to 4y square rooted should be plus or minus, but we're dropping the minus because we're not working. We're only working the positive region here. So this is actually in terms of x now. So this is the horizontal distance that we need. So this top part here is root 4y is equal to x. I guess you could call it x2 or x1, whatever floats your boat. And then we want to subtract off this small distance here. So we're left with the middle distance. This small distance here, well, follows this function. y is equal to root 4x. Only problem is, this is in terms of y as opposed to x. So we rearrange, square both sides, divided by 4. Now, this is in terms of the smaller x right here. So we can actually subtract these two. So if the top one minus the bottom one, top one minus bottom one. And we actually get the length of this rectangle. Now we have to take the integral. Well, we knew on the other paper that I had 
this x, the intersect is when x was equal to 4. But what about when, what the y is? What's the y? Because we're trying to find up adding rectangles all the way to this point, this height. But what is that height? Well, you take any function we want. Let's just say this guy. Put the 4 into it. Find out what the y is. It's equal to 4. Perfect. So this point is y is equal to 4. This horizontal right here. So when we take the integral, we're from 0 to 4, 0 to 4 of the length of the rectangle times the height of the rectangle, which is dy. And just solve this integral. Now, I'm going to let you solve the integral. So I'm going to put dot, dot, dot. But it's the exact same integral as the last one. And the answer is equal to 16 over 3. This is, you can solve this in terms of any lengthwise or horizontal rectangles. You just got to switch the rectangles. You got to switch the functions in terms of those rectangles. So for horizontal rectangles, this length has to be a function of x. x is equal to f of y. I don't know. I'm not good with math terms. But basically, this has to look x is equal to like y squared plus 2. Something like that. Talking about lengths and stuff. And it's also width of dy. And for the vertical rectangles, this is like what your y is equal to like an x function. Yeah, I'm stupid. This is y is equal to f of x. And this is y. x is equal to f of y. Yeah. So that's what you're looking for. You just got to remember the integral for the horizontal guy takes shape with of an fy function multiplied by dy. I guess it's not dy, but and then this boy over here is f of x function by dx. So these have to be the same. Y, y, x, x. You know you're generally correct if that's what you get. Now, that was a long example, my apologies. But the next example I wanted to do was a quickie. Y is equal to sine x from zero to pi. So we start by graphing this. Well, y0 is just at the bottom here. Easy money. Sine. When x is 0, so sine of 0. What is the sine of 0? Remember your unit circle. So when x is 0, the angle is 0. So that means the sine, which is the height, is just 0. When x is pi over 2. Oh, look at that. The height is 1. And then when it's back down to pi, back down to pi, x sine is just zero. Looks like that. Y is equal to sine x. So we want to find the area. Now in order to find the area, we can do vertical rectangles. Who? Because this functions in terms of y right now. So we know what the height is. And at any given moment, we look at a rectangle. This height of the rectangle is well, the, from the base to the top 
sine of x minus zero, if that makes sense. Top function minus bottom function with respect to dx. Not with respect, the width is dx. And then we want to take the integral from, well, we're going adding up rectangles like this. So we're going from, well, zero, and this was pi, this ended on pi. So from zero to pi of sine x times dx. Again, so this is the height. And this was the width together. Height times width is equal to area. So that's area of one rectangle. I'm going a bit faster because this is just a little example. So now we have to take the integral of sine x. The derivative of cos is negative sine x, but the derivative of negative cos is just sine x. Therefore, negative cos x is the integral. Just remember that is however you want to. It's up to you. I generally do derivatives and then work my way backwards. And we don't have to worry about the plus c because this is a definite integral. Remember that. Evaluate this from pi to zero. So when cos pi minus minus negative cos, so we can just do plus, I'll write that out, minus negative cos zero is equal to negative, well, cos of pi, back to our unit circle, when it's pi, so when it goes all the way around the circle, when it goes all the way around the circle, we end up on this region right here, where cos is negative one, so this is negative, negative one, minus negative cos is zero, just one, minus one. So negative, negative one is one, negative, negative one is plus one, is equal to two. Perfect. So the last example I really want you all to understand is a big one. All right, let's graph this. So y equals zero is easy. Just along the bottom here, y is equal to negative x plus four. Well, y is equal to x is just this. y is equal to negative x is just this. And we're adding four to it. What's up there? This is y is equal to negative x plus four. We know this is at four. And this is at y is equal to four. Because, well, when x is zero, y is four. When x is four, y is zero. This is a negative x. And then this function x is equal to y squared plus 2. <coughs> well, what is x is equal to y squared? x is equal to y squared. Oh, I can barely see it on camera. x is equal to y squared is this. Now we're adding 2 to it to the, in the x direction. So it looks like this. Now, the last one. So we got this one, we got this one, we got this one. Last one's a big one. To do this, I have to think about, again, y is equal to 
Alright, x is equal to y squared is this. Now we're making a flip. We're making a flip in the x direction because of this negative. And we are shifting it up four. And we know that we are shifting it up four because, well, y is equal to four, then x is zero. So it's up there. When y is equal to four. But what's this point of intersection? This point of intersection happens when y is equal to zero. So when y is equal to zero, x is equal to negative 16. Perfect. Now the area that we're trying to find is the area between all these curves. Awesome. So, let's begin. So in the first step, we have to decide whether we want horizontal rectangles or vertical rectangles. If we look and try to do horizontal, sorry, if we look and try to do vertical, we can set up one vertical rectangle here in this zone. And then when we try to add it, we reach this point and beyond this point, the top function of this rectangle changes. Therefore, we have to have another rectangle with a different size to it. And then when we go along this point, right at this point, the function changes again. And we have to have a different size of a rectangle. So we have to have three vertical rectangles. If we were to do horizontal rectangles, horizontal rectangles, this portion is good. As we get up to this nook, the function ends up changing on this right side. So we have to have another vertical or horizontal rectangle and the function only changes twice. So we'll do horizontal rectangles. So we're going to have two integrals because we have two different functions of rectangles. Now the first rectangle that we're looking at is this top one here. The size of it is defined from this right line, or the length of it is defined from this right line minus this bottom line. I should say function, this top function, this right function minus this left function. And this right function is nothing but y is equal to negative x plus 4. But the thing is, we're talking about the length now. So we want to put this function in terms of x. So we'll get x is equal to 4 minus y. So this right part here is 4 minus y minus, because it's always minus, the bottom half. And this bottom function is, well, whatever this x was, and this x at any given moment was this function minus, another minus, we'll just say plus, y minus 4 squared, with a height of dy. Perfect. And it goes from, we're adding it up from bottom to top, it goes from, what is this? What is this y? Well, this y is the intersection between, see this is a long question. This y right here, whoops, sorry, is the intersection between this parabola that I didn't write down 
x is equal to y squared plus 2 and this line all right so to get the intersection I'm just gonna use a scrap paper so to get the intersection between y is equal to or x is equal to y squared plus 2 and y is equal to negative x plus 4 just put it put this boy in this boy and you'll get x is equal to negative x plus 4 all squared plus 2 x is equal to x squared plus negative negative x times 4 times 2 is not plus it's minus 8x plus 6 plus 16 plus 2 x squared minus 8x plus 16 or plus 18 now equal to x put this x to the other side factor Six and three looks like you can do it. So minus three minus six. Negative negative six times negative three is nothing but positive eighteen. Negative three plus negative six is negative nine. So therefore, when x is six and three, our solutions. Look back at our diagram. This must be the point when x is equal to 3. Silly me, I solved it the wrong way. And this is, must be the point when x is equal to 6. So I didn't actually solve for y, which I should have. I solved for x, but we can find what y is based upon this x by substituting into the function, one of these functions. So when, so when x is equal to 3, when x is equal to 3 for this function, we get a y. We get a y of 1. So this is when y is equal to 1. So therefore, we know from going back to what we were doing, from y is equal to 1 to y is equal to 4, this function, this length, That's four. It's area of the rectangle is being added up. And we have to add, so we got the top area done. Now we have to have the bottom area here. Now it's bottom area. That rectangle. the right side of this, the right side of the rectangle is equal to the same, this function right here. That's also in terms of x. So we get y squared plus two. Cause that's the, the rightmost x minus the leftmost x, which was this function right here which was this, minus minus plus y minus four squared with the dy. So then we have another integral from y is equal to zero to y is equal to one of y squared plus two plus y minus four all squared dy. Now, if we solve for this and we add up the areas, so add up the integrals, we'll get the answer of the area between this. I'm not going to do that on camera. It will take me longer, but I will write down the final answer when I get it.
Thank you for watching the video. It's a bit long. I'm pretty tired from it. But math is cool, ain't it?